Welcome. In this video, I would like to address with a bit of nuance a topic that is vital to academic research, and that is understanding the distinctions among data, information, and knowledge. These words are frequently used together, interchangeably, sometimes as synonyms, but they actually are distinct from one another. And I hope by watching this video, you can improve the quality of your academic research and reporting by understanding the distinctions among these three terms. Now, as I've done in prior videos, to collect my thoughts, I wrote a paper, and I'd like to share that paper with you. The terms data and information are often used interchangeably in colloquial discourse, as if they were synonyms. Nevertheless, both data and information are each necessary to the creation of knowledge. Now, academic discourse requires distinguishing between the first two terms, data and information, and this is sometimes done in the information technology literature. However, before addressing the distinctions between the first two terms and how together they can be used to create knowledge, it may be appropriate to address the grammar elephant that's in the room. The word data is the plural form of datum. One datum, multiple data. However, in colloquial use, data is often used as a collective noun with a verb in the singular form. For example, today's data is corrupt. In this case, the intended reference is not to the abstractions being corrupt, but the recording, which is a singular noun. I encourage you to use the term data solely as a plural noun in your formal discourse. For example, the data have been recorded. This allows distinguishing through consistent use between the singular datum and the plural data. Now, my advice notwithstanding, abide the instructions that you receive from your professors. If you're writing for a professor who prefers to use the word data and does not distinguish between data and datum, abide that professor's preference. While you, you may prefer to make the distinction between the singular and the plural forms, the best course of action is likely to not disagree with your professor on this minor point of English grammar, particularly since this point is not settled in either formal or colloquial use. Moreover, you may acquire a novel perspective by seeking to understand why your professor has their preference. After class, you're going to be free to decide for yourself as to how you will use the term, or terms if you choose to make the distinction, in your future academic, career, and personal discourses. Not all data are information. For example, the data in digital information technology systems are the bits and bytes that are the smallest components stored to or read from storage medium, such as solid state memory, or transmitted via a digital connection, such as through a local area network or the internet. Data often refers to a technical element, while information refers to the quality of usefulness, as in the distinction between data's quality being a technical issue 
and information's qualities being a non-technical issue. Distinguishing between data and information is not limited to the IT literature, though. A public blog article related to medical care identified the plethora of data that's available to medical care providers and the need for a context to be created within which these data can be understood and then used to serve patients. It is vital that data from computer files and physical records be converted to information that facilitates one's work. The entries in a patient's medical record are data. The procedures to provide care in response to a particular diagnosis are data. It is vital that these procedures be useful as information to the caregiver. The data are records, often stored in digital form, such as Adobe PDF files, entries in a spreadsheet or a database, and physical materials that form a repository. Information, on the other hand, is cognitively created by one who is able to understand and process the data. Information is not permanent, as data can be. Information is a temporal construction that's contrived from data, usually to serve a particular purpose. Okay, data are records. Information is a cognitive construction that makes data useful. So what is knowledge? Knowledge is a relation. It's a state in which one has cognitive contact with reality. The study of knowledge is called epistemology. While there are multiple types of knowledge, for example, ability knowledge, known as know-how, that's necessary when conducting research. One, for example, one must know how to use the university library or Google Scholar to acquire data from expert sources. Propositional knowledge, in contrast to ability knowledge, allows the presentation of a formal argument or at least of a well-described claim, such as the universe is infinite in physical size, or light moves through a vacuum at about 186,000 miles per second. The information available to make those two claims is a form of knowledge, as it's known to the proposer the person making the claim. So, what's the relationship among data, information, and knowledge? Data are digital bits and bytes, such as documents that we create, or analog or physical structures, such as tape recordings or books. And they're stored in or on a medium such as a solid-state drive or a bookshelf. Information is data that have been cognitively acquired, they've been ingested into our mind, after being organized and presented in a usable form, such as the medical procedures. Knowledge comes from the acquisition of that information relevant to a particular topic and put into a cognitive construct that offers an understanding of how the information may be put to a particular intended use. It's knowledge is knowing when to use the information and how to use the information. Knowledge, when sufficiently deep, allows one to judge 
which information is useful to a given project and which is not useful. Knowledge also facilitates the acknowledgement of divergent information, particularly contradictory information when presenting a formal argument. A good argument will have um, not only the presentation of data in support of the thesis, but also acknowledgement that there exists data that contradicts the thesis and uh, showing a weighting between the supporting and contradictory information in favor of the supporting information. I hope this brief introduction to the distinctions among data, information, and knowledge is helpful. Data are those items that we gather during research. Information is the construction of relationships among the data. And knowledge is a cognitive process that allows us to apply the information to a particular purpose, at knowing or being able to judge which information is most relevant to the project. It's really helpful to me to think of the distinctions among data, information, and knowledge when I'm conducting research and when I'm writing the arguments in my papers or preparing a lecture or preparing a YouTube video. I wish you the very best during all of your academic research activities, and I hope understanding these distinctions serves you well. I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Bye for now.